Welcome back to Albums of the Year. Today we're going to be reacting to a new album that just dropped. Hellfire. Yes, it's called Hellfire by the band Black Midi. It's their third full-length LP. And yeah, this band's one of the upcoming and popular acts in the kind of post-punk scene that's kind of unfolding since the late 2010s. And uh, they're kind of at the forefront of it, one of the best bands, in my opinion, doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this album's their third one. You know, it has a similar album cover to their second album, Cavalcade, which was one of the one of my favorite albums of 2021. That's the only one by them that I've listened to. Um, I haven't listened to their first one. But it was very cool experience. Uh, very experimental, so I really don't know what, ex what to expect of this, but I just imagine it'll be good. So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna listen to it. So it's 10 songs and it's about 39 minutes. The first track is called Hellfire. Cool. <laughs> Wish her house, a ringing noise, new flesh, a new mark, a weightlessness, a headache, a sore limb, a hitch, a gash, a mirage, a tumor, a scare, a memoir that's fixed and I'm a brick, one song destroyed, more awake, no such thing as luck, only chance in the rock, and ever for loss, running low, almost empty, almost always gone, going, going, gone, each day quicker, each day gone, lost, the more, the less, the less, you say, that's that, no more, no more, no more, no What an interesting album intro. The instrumental, like, the instrument choice was just really interesting. Mm -hmm. It was like almost carnival, but also like very jazz, very, like, old old jazz, I guess. Um, yeah. Like big band almost. It was very chaotic and very intense. Yeah. And the lyrics were like rapid fire, almost kind of like rapping. Almost. I, was, I, was, I was thinking of like, um, at like a silent auction. The yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like a salesman or whatever. Yeah, like auctioneer. Yeah. Just rattling off. Yeah. yeah. But, but the lyrics I could hear, I, I don't know, I couldn't hear a lot of it, but definitely sounded almost like a, like some sort of pastor or, or preacher or sort of like, you know, on a soapbox too. Yeah. Really interesting. Uh, wow. What a cool start. Yeah. Track two is called Sugar Slash Two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. I thought they were having up something really intense and it's like elevator music. Yeah. Posterity will show me to be the greatest the world has ever seen. A genius of all not entities. Okay. That bass stuff is like thunder in there. <laughs> Fast. Fast bass. I love the, the big band elements. Yeah. Wow, that was insane. That was a really good song. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Like, what what propulsion throughout that song? Yeah. Was that? Uh, I feel like this and the last song um, both have, like, a very distinct, like, desperation to them. Oh, yeah, totally. Like they're rushing forward faster. It's like that feeling when you're, like, sprinting so fast that, like, you feel like you're, if you stop sprinting, you'll just fall on your face. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Uncontrollable speed. Yeah, no, that was great. Like, I, I don't know. I, I love the, the switch up between the... The softer part of that song, or parts of that song, and mm -hmm. then like the almost like metal drumming. <laughs> yeah. Know? 
And I like the yeah, it was awesome. And then I like the singing a lot too. It's very passionate, like yeah. really good. It's some really good like sustained notes and everything too. Mm-hmm. But the singer's voice is so di- uh, distinct for Black Money. It's really good. Yeah. So now the third track is called Eat Men Eat. <laughs> cool. elephants at the end there. <laughs> yeah. What an interesting ending. That song, like, a lot of very dynamic variation and then the ending just really popped off. <laughs> yeah, wow. No, I, I like how re- somewhat restrained the vocals are until the end where they just kind of go, like, really deranged and then instrumental also matches that pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the song had, like, five or six parts, it felt like, mm-hmm. and, like, barely, you know, re- retreaded ground. Definitely, yeah. Really evolved to it. The three minute runtime. <laughs> only three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but like a whole opus. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of like, honestly, that Eagle War album that we listened to yeah. a few weeks ago, where it's just like, from the beginning to the end of the song, it's like you go went on a journey. <laughs> and it was like, not a long song. <laughs> yeah. This has been really, really good so far. Yeah, I, I just really love the use of like brass instruments. Oh, yeah. It's so powerful in this album. And also, yeah, just this song had so many cool rhythms. Like some of them I recognized to be like Latin kind of rhythms or at least Latin influence. Yeah, I could I could tell in the last track. Yeah. So now we have uh, Welcome to Hell. <laughs> nice. That's cool. This is a more post punk. Yeah. Listen, the sweet peals of moonlight induce love making on the streets tonight. Listen, the soft purr of motorbikes. I love how it's like George C. It's in the nightlife. So it's in it. So long, tell me of your troubles, your emotional grief. Experience the red rooms, the green tables. Oh, this slap is awesome. This is great. The gauntness of red-blooded chivalry instilled in basic training. Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> 
That was the best one so far. Yeah, that's my favorite so far. Yeah, I'm leaving a like on that. Yeah, that was uh, really awesome. <laughs> I, I just, it was so like staccato for most of it. And it was just like, you know, just these parts kind of going back and forth. I felt like the pan was changing a lot too. Yeah. And it was like, they just had so many good little ideas. It's like they loop, they did like a loop jam where they had a bunch of different ideas on one kind of uh, central core. And then they just broke those ideas apart and just made them different parts in the song. Yeah, and like I liked all of the different parts. Like, like all these ideas are awesome. The really dissonant groove that they had, kind of for the first bit of the song, with like the mm -hmm. guitars that sound like they're slicing into each other, and then like the really manic vocals on top, and then there's like the really big brass part. Uh, the ba, 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 yeah, that was awesome. awesome. There's so, I don't know. There's so much more to that song. I was going to listen to that one a lot more. I think. I felt like yeah, the the brass part was also so much more impactful because like that kind of thing was we've we've heard that earlier on in the album a little bit. But it was so much more impactful because it was going from that kind of very staccato, empty percussion like empty production into that where it was very full and loud and big. Totally. It's like a very big contrast there, and that really made it pop. So I could get the lyrics were something about like I think it was like the story of a guy who joined the military or whatever, and then had a terrible time and then afterwards was rejected by society. That's kind of what I could tell the lyrics are about, but I might be wrong, but I'll look into them after this video for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely picked up some lyrics about war and all yeah. that too. So next we have Still. Also, this album definitely flows really well together, so it would be good to listen to his more full thing after. Yeah. That's a good different singer. Very least, very different scenes. Oh, yes. It's almost like a country sort of sound to that slide guitar, right? Or this is like, really like a guitar. kind of like a surf rock kind of sound. Or maybe surf rock. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. But the the guitar is picked very like almost like a banjo. And then there's these horns, which are very different. Very different vibe from their first four songs. Mm -hmm. Could change though. holding back on this song. Like they're faking they're faking me out a little bit like this is gonna get crazy and then it's like pull back.
Very beautiful song, especially near the end. I love this kind of ambience. Mm -hmm. I wasn't listening to lyrics, but I definitely got like a thematic progression. I felt like, you know, trying to be happy, you know, the major chords, the upbeat, you know, guitar picking, all of that. Mm -hmm. But like, there was like a really, like a chaos, darkness trying to break through. And then like, it would like, you know, swell. You'd think it was gonna get dissonant and then it would pull back and be just happy again. And I kept like, you know, moving as though it's like, I don't know, if, it's like on the edge of, of, you know, breaking, but it's like, it's, it's just holding together. And then around middle, the middle point, it was like, it started to actually like break apart and it was like da, 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 kind of thing. And then it just completely broke down to just the very simple guitar line yeah. and it kind of built up from there, but just very relaxed the rest of the song. Yeah, it was great. Very cool. I like songs that have like a minute or so just ambience at the end to kind of like let you think of what you heard or mm -hmm. you know, almost abridging. Like that's almost an interlude on this album, but they just left it as the rest of this track instead of making it its own track. Yeah, it's very nice. So what do we have next? Halftime. Oh! That was eight weeks in May by the Orange Street Boys. Keep that dial locked to 66.6 Hellfire with yours truly, Radio Raheem. Next up, a song like no other. Listen! Okay. <laughs> Reminded me of like moments, just like samples or whatever that would be used on Centipede Hurts by Animal Collective. Oh yeah. Very weird. In the context of the album, like after that like serene minute and a half of the last track, that was very jarring. Yeah. It was a little 20, 25 second interlude. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Kind of creepy in a way. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now we actually have okay, the next song. Changing channel onto whatever this is. Yeah. Yeah, totally. The race is about to begin. This is... Oh, 
Wow. That was a real journey, that song. Yeah, that middle part-ish was incredibly oh. overstimulating. It yeah. Was like, this is going way too far. My brain cannot process how fast It, it was like some of the stuff on the powers that be. It was like him speaking basically over it. Like, it was a solid minute and a half of just rapid fire lyrics, right? And then like, the, the instrumental just getting crazier and crazier and crazier. <laughs> And then we dropped off to kind of the more serene last half of the song. But yeah. Wow. What a, what a, what a crazy song. <laughs> Imagine that live. It would be really intense. <laughs> so now we have Dangerous Liaisons. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was very jazzy. It was, yeah. It was a really, really fun song. Jazz, yeah, I like the voices he was doing throughout. Yeah, and the lyrics so it seemed like they were like telling a story kind of thing, like a again a very chaotic stream of consciousness type story, like a lot of the other tracks on this album. But yeah, very very cool. And yeah, glimpses of some sort of mob. Mm -hmm. Satan himself showed him, <laughs> showed his skin at the end. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's like shouting like murder and yeah. the music just goes crazy with the horns. I love the trumpet blasting, it was so scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a really good song. It had like a real vibe to it. I don't mm -hmm. know how to describe it. Like, there's a lot of atmosphere in these songs, even though there's like not a lot of space to breathe in these songs. It's mostly like complete chaos. <laughs> but like ordered chaos the whole time. Yeah. Huh, that was that was a very cool track. Mm -hmm. Alright, here we go. Track nine, the defense. Cool. Swarm out the ways, and the street lamps are lit. Pathetic. I feel like he's almost singing with like a different inflection in his voice than usual. Like some of these things. Like, there's been a lot of vocal variety. There has been. To our establishment, he starts to cry. Safe and as formal, 
Was the most like straightforward song yeah uh, right if it just felt like kind of like a frank sinatra track what made now yeah yeah it was very old timey and, and really nice i don't know the vocals mm -hmm. are very like sweet somehow mm -hmm. like that song had a really like it opened up at the end for like a really nice kind of climax right yeah like, yeah it was it was complex still there's lots oh, yeah. going on but but it was more yeah. followable <laughs> yeah for sure and nice yeah cool yeah that one definitely stood out to me on this listen as well last track is called 27 questions
Wow. That was a very dramatic last track. Yeah, it was. It was awesome. Like, I like how it's it's very sweet and, and everything like that, but also has, like, this great groove. It turns into that section where he, like, starts talking about, like, 27 questions. Mm -hmm. Then he doesn't get through all the questions, and then it takes, like, a much darker turn. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. It's a very odd closer. It was very good. <laughs> yeah, this is a very peculiar album. Like, totally. It definitely felt different than Cavalcade. Like, yeah. It had a very distinct color palette, I guess, to it. Yeah, there was more, like, horns to it, more dissonance, more chaos, mm -hmm. but also like some moments that were just more calm and more almost like it had this kind of like old lounge feel to it. Right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What is the John something? John L or something? Yeah. Yeah, um, that sounds right. That, the I should, track of yeah, the, the first track. I felt like they took that track, like the jazziness, the chaos of that track, and they're like, oh, people like this? This is the popular song? <laughs> Let's uh, just go all ham. We, we, didn't think that people would like that kind of sound, but people love it, so let's let's go for Maybe, it. yeah. Like, I, I, I just get that feel. They're, like, continuing that sound more. It was definitely jazzier than Cavalcade, less post-punky, honestly, mm -hmm. and it had more, yeah, it had more brass and more, like, you know, like horns and... Big, and, and like, big, big band big elements, band yeah. Elements. Yeah, like, very good. Also a lot of piano, but, like, this kind of, like, yeah. you know, this old-fashioned, old-timey sounding piano. Yeah. A lot of dissonance in the piano, too. Like, that last track, they're just slamming on the keys. <laughs> I love how that last track used the offbeat so much in this rhythm, right? Yeah, yeah. It's really good. Like, there's a lot of parts, if you just listen to the instrumental, there's so much going on. And then the the, the vocals just add a, such another complex layer to things yeah. as well. They really steal the attention. I, I could barely... I, I felt the opposite. I could barely pay attention to the vocals, because well, there's yeah. just so much going on. It's hard to discern what they're, what they're saying, like, without looking at the lyrics. And it's too early, so there's no lyrics on Spotify. Right, right. Uh, so like it's really a, it's really a clash for attention it feels like between the what the vocalist is singing about or saying or talking about yeah and then how much is going on in the instrumentals like it's such a complex album <laughs> yeah there are a lot of rhythmic sections that just is like I have no I have no <laughs> idea what's going on here yeah. I was trying to count time signatures and it's like nope I give up I and they keep no changing idea. so much like the rhythm yeah. really is very, very interesting. Like, this is such a, it's a short album, which I'm glad about, because there's so much packed in that 39 minutes that yeah. it's going to be, it'll take a while to, like, really get into all of the songs. Right? Sure, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I'll be listening to this again, that's for sure. Oddly enough, I, even though it was, like, very chaotic and, and like, intense, I think this is, this feels like something I could put on, like, in most settings. Like, it's, it's not like, abrasive music. Yeah, right? yeah. It's just, like, very busy music. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> But I, I like the atmosphere that this album sort of creates in its, yeah. in its chaos and in its sound. Like, yeah, I feel like I kind of lost my mind a little bit over that, over the course of that album, but like, in a good way. It felt similar to like, I think, listening to the first half of The Powers That Beat for me. Yeah. Like by the end of it, I'm just like brain fried, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but uh, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to, to listen to this more because it could end up being one of my favorites of the year. Mm -hmm. I could see it, so. Yeah. Thanks for watching, and uh, we're happy to announce that we're just on the cusp of 500 subscribers. I, probably by the time I upload this, we might be. Our next video will be somewhat of a celebration of that, so yep. uh, stay tuned. See ya.